Evening everybody, don't know who's on yet, but how are you? How was your week? Hope it was good. Put up in the comments if you want to uh, tell us any interesting stories that happened to you or not. Uh, we've had a few good ones this week, so... It's been an interesting week. It has been an interesting week, so we'll probably talk about a little bit of that. Um, as you probably remembered last week, we actually ran out of battery again. So that's why I dumped off. Lines on battery wise. Zane's just telling me now he doesn't know what the battery's on right now, so uh, it could be another short one, who knows. Um, hey Brendan, how are you mate? I like the fact that I've already got heaps of thumbs up, so that's fucking good. Um, being Friday, what's everybody having for dinner? Fish and chip Friday, seems like a good one. Here comes the board that Zane was arguing about last week. Oh, I wrote everything up on this board, no fucking looks at it. Yeah, well, you didn't make it. I wasn't that I'd written everything up. I don't mind writing everything up. I just want you to fucking, like, give some assistance to it. I want that during the week. Sometimes we get what we ask for. Fucking have a soup. Have just do your fucking job. Have, you are having a soup. That's what I'm saying. You're having a soup. There you are. No, I was just saying that there's nothing on that board that you've actually yeah, there come is. up with. What idea was yours? Yeah, to look at the fucking board to work it out. There's fucking three down the bottom. What's that? Different firearms options for different purposes. Right. So, what are we going to do there? Reloading tips, tricks, and tech. And annoying customer traits, which is actually what I'm talking about tonight. After I Okay, so that's it. yours, and the other two would be uh, my responsibility anyway. Unless you want to talk about fucking reloading. Fuck, you know about reloading. Nothing. So, there you go. Lots of things. They're probably all wrong, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. It's all in the learning process. What's There's nothing to drink in the fridge, either. Nah, I've got water. It's been a while since we've had a, uh, hey, had a Friday cook. Night Live. Chuck G'day, Bradley. Me. Yeah, fucking, it's about time, buddy. It's about time Jason's buddy bought some food down for us. Chris, Chris is having corned beef sandwiches for dinner. Oh, yeah. Uh, Did you like corned corn beef? That's like silver side, isn't it? Are you in jail? No, oh, corn, corn silver corn side. Silver side is shit. It's literally the worst cut of meat. You have Shane. to boil the shit out of it to make it even half edible. Shane, can we have 9mm charges after the apparent sap win? Well, I don't know if we're going to get into that one, mate. That's That's been a pretty epic week. Uh, so there was, the was no sap win, so um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you straight to how it is. There was no sap win. It never went to sat. So the police had originally... Um, made the decision under section 11 of the legislation that they weren't going to approve applications for Ruby charges. They since rescinded that. Now, they haven't given us a reason why they rescinded it, but they didn't go to SAT to rescind it. All they said is that they would apply, like they would make each application. assessment thing. At this stage, no one's got one, yeah? And they're probably still not going yeah. to. So you've got to find a club that'll that'll give you a nomination for it first. Unless you've got one. And then one, the police will no. decide from there. But at this stage, no one's won one. No. Well, like, no one's got one. And I mean, as we've well, got several instances of that as well, yeah? So um, just be a little bit careful. If someone's saying that they've got wins in SAT and that sort of stuff, there might be a little bit more to it, yeah? Yeah, and... Especially I mean, don't be going throwing money around to people that claim they've made had wins in so At the risk of pissing off the bogans that run Shooting Stuff Australia, um, maybe you guys should just shut the fuck up for a while. Yeah, well, you're like, not doing anyone any favours. You're, you're, not, you're not helping. You're, you're just being a pair of yeah, and you're making, like You're making more enemies than you're making friends. Yeah, you, you're actually dividing, mate. You, you're not doing fuck all and all this. So... Um, you know, I've seen your videos on YouTube, most of it's crap. I mean, I don't really want to call you out, that's not really my intentions here, but... I hope not, but... Um, you know... Well, I mean, you're, you're not helping us at something all, different, but, I mean, there's, there's... There's a difference between swearing on camera and doing... Silly things. Well, yeah. You know? Dangerous. So... Yeah, and, and especially don't be calling out people over here that you've never met, don't know anything about, and come up with crap about to try and, you know, make yourself look good. You, you don't have a clue what any of these other fellas that you're calling out are doing for the industry. You're just being a dickhead. So, 
Thanks. Yeah. So you don't know what's going on in WA legislation wise. Yeah. So I just leave it at that. That's it. Uh, Hunt, catch, cook. Jace reckons stop pissing in the wind and get on with it. <laughs> uh, Chris, you, never, you guys never got onto whether breaking in a barrel is myth or worthwhile. Alright, well it's worthwhile. Well, it's not. No, it can be one's not. Okay, there you go. Zane's gonna do that one. Should we write on the board? No, I'll we'll just do it. Oh, okay. Take off again. Oh, okay. Well, you can write on the board again. I'm just gonna to add to the things that I'm gonna. Oh, I don't like it. You sit higher than me. That's I don't like it. So, oh, you want me to do any other? You should be right? higher than me because you've got a longer torso than me. I've also, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. All right, long way. Hey boys, Trevor Brickhill's watching. Scoops is on. Bruce, I don't know if we said hello before, but hello. Shane, Bradley, go Brad, Steve, and Macropod. Macropod's always on. I like Macropod. I don't even know who his real name is, but he's got a good, good Facebook handle. Yeah. So, what we need is we need a, a Facebook handle. Some guy to get on called Thylacine. <laughs> You'd be a Tasmanian. I reckon, sure. I reckon, you know, I reckon Kemp should do that. Kemp. Yeah, well, that's where he lives, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah, where he lives. With, yeah, so. with, with his two ends and all. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere like that. So, <laughs> you should change up the thylacine. And that way, when you get banned on Facebook, which you do every second week, yeah, you go, it's so. not your real name. <laughs> no, no, so he goes hard, eh, man? He just gives it to people, just feeds it like just constant. Yeah, do it. And then he gets banned. He gets What's Facebook banned. He's kind of like Cubist. Cubist does the same thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, Cubist doesn't get banned. He's pretty tactful about his politics. Oh, I... Reno's off to dig some holes. Beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> the gun that's here in front of us... Leo! Leo, remember, mate, we're in Perth. Not in Victoria like you are. So, this is a B230. So, one of the things that I've been working on... And I manufactured a heap a while back for our shotguns and the, and the B220s and stuff was a, a stock adapter. Now with that, the original stock adapter, the buffer tube was much lower, yeah? And there was two reasons for that. It was to do with um, the look of it and also to get the, <coughs> the bolt screw in it correctly. Now this one, I didn't have big enough material. I'm waiting on my material supplier to ring out and tell me that he's got the material set aside for me. Um, but I'm getting some bigger material so I can make those original ones again. But I made this one with what I had. Now this is the B230. So the B230s have got the high sights on them. And so I raised up the buffer tube section up. So for two reasons. A, so your high, eyes at a high line for the higher sights. But also so the buffer tube is in line with the barrel. And that's so when the gun recoils, it recoils straight backwards into your shoulder. It doesn't make the gun lift, so you can keep your sights on target better. I might. It's a bit. It's a bit neither here nor there. Like the so, this is just high enough to look through the sights, but it's perfect height for a red dot. You can even be a little bit higher for a red dot. So I might even make one that's even a little bit higher again. It was really nice with the red dot. Do you reckon you can make one with? Do you can make one with a dovetail rail in there so you can adjust the height a little bit maybe? Because no. I can see it's at an angle there, if oh, you're able to... These ones don't have the space around them. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Yeah, that looks better. Uh, it's not really an angle. No, I mean... This, this space here. Yeah, that has to be at an angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but if you maybe stick a rail in there, you can adjust the height a little bit. Yeah, that's true. And then you can have any kind of... Now, if you heard the way you said, yeah, that's true, though, that means shut the fuck up. Yeah, um, I, I'm learning that. Can you pass me one that's got a quick attach mount on it? Uh, that means I've got to go get one off your wall. Yeah, maybe I'll do all that off I'll do the old thing. Well... Yeah, people are asking. Well, we've done a we've done a survey on here, Bill, and apparently nobody likes old shit with Bill. No, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so much everyone watches if, old shit, and then they just hang around to watch me. That's, and that's right. So, if, uh, if that's the case, guys, if you only hang around to watch me and Zane afterwards, just give us a thumbs up. If you want to see Bill right now, smiley face. Let's go. Let's see it. We're going to do the count. Maybe Bill's a little bit like play school, and you guys are a little bit like the big kids' cartoons that come after play yeah, school. Here, right. here we go. Let's see. How many smiley faces are we going to get for Bill's old shit? Fuck all. None. I'm not seeing any. I'm, I'm disappointed. 
Where's three, four? Yeah, but those, those well, are laughing. That, that's a laughing. Oh one. god, like so, I can see hundreds of them. So the problem is, is that <laughs> Scoops is going mental with fucking <laughs> just just thumbs up for us. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, well, it was a tough one. It was oh, a tough cool. one. <laughs> what do you got to talk about, Bill? <laughs> old, an old All shotgun. Right. Well, All I'll, right. I'll get the fuck I'll out of the way. This one. Look at that. <laughs> Jump in there, Bill. All right. The people have spoken. Here comes Bill. <laughs> yeah, for something Just really old. Just against the fucking table a few more times, right? That's all right. It's soft wood. Yeah, it's only soft wood. <laughs> but it is a soft barrel. It's too. a soft barrel. Yeah. Now this is a an old, very old shotgun, made around about 1860, 1870. Um, there's a few things to tell us about that. Why that is? Someone's left a comment. Um, that would be you, <laughs> probably. <man. laughs> it's um, it's had a varied life. It, it came to me about almost thirty years ago. A, a chap um, rang me up when I was working when I was down the country. This guy rang me up and said he had some guns he wanted to get rid of. He was going for a trip around Australia and he he wanted to get rid of a, um, some rifles. So he came and saw me. And we did a deal on, I think, three rifles, a, a Omar a Bruno Hornet, which I must have sold, resold, because I haven't got it, and uh, something else, I can't remember. Oh, an old Winchester, that's right. Anyway, he was very happy with the deal, I was happy enough, and he said, um, I've got something for you, uh, seeing you so, you've done me uh, so, so well with this, with the three rifles. He, came back with this case, wooden case, the original case that this came in. It's a bit worse for wear now, but it's you know, 160 years old now, or more. Um, and uh, a telescope, that's right. Anyway, I did a bit of research on this. <laughs> well, one of the things he told me was that I'd been using it with um, modern smokeless loads for about the last 40 years. And it speaks well for this gun because it's a Damascus barrel. It's only two and a half inch chambers. It's a high grade Damascus barrel too, isn't it? Because yeah. it's got the weave and everything. That's right. It's, a, it's, it's not a, you probably won't be able to see it on camera. But yeah. It's not a Holland and Holland, but it's a very nice old shotgun. The few interesting things about it is, if, if you want to, if you could get up close to the hammer, yeah, you see, that the hammers are like percussion hammers um, and this maker made percussion shotguns prior to this he started making um, uh, cartridge shotguns about 1865 or so and, um, and another little interesting feature is, is the brake action of it it's a side lever which has got a Still got a lock-up system in the in the bottom of, under the bottom of the barrel, <clears throat> just like a modern shotgun. That one, it really uh, that that feature has carried on uh, for the last 150 or 60 years. You might have to talk up a little bit. Yeah, you're talking a bit quiet there, Bill. Oh, sorry. They, um, yeah, that 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 uh, system of locking the the barrels down into the action is is still used today. Uh, just about every shotgun maker uses that, that idea. They don't use the side lever, they use a, a top lever, uh, which swings to the right hand side. Um, this old girl though, uh, I haven't never fired it, but it's still in remarkably good condition. And it may have been refurbished a couple of times in its life because the wood is not proud of the metal anymore and they were quite often made with the wood a little proud of the metal so that the, um, they could go back and be refinished. It might have just shrunk over the years and you know, dried out in front. Could, could well have done. Uh, another, you know, well, I've seen some wear because well, you can see the checkering patterns and everything. Are yeah, it has been used a lot because well, the checkering's almost worn completely off the forehead. It also definitely wasn't made in Australia, so it was made in a more damp climate. That's right, yeah, made in England, yeah. yeah. Um, another interesting little feature that, that tells its age is the method of holding the forend on it's a, uh, a, a little spring-loaded 
little spring loaded, not a wedge in but a bar, they slot it and spring it open in the middle so that you can, when you press it in, lock it into the gun, onto the gun, it'll start and then because you've sprung it, as you press it in, it becomes tighter and tighter until it's, it's fully home and that, they won't fall out. Quite smart. Um, oh, I wouldn't say it was smart, I would say it was exceptionally well made. Yeah, someone, you know, making something with that sort of tolerance, yeah. you know, that's, they would have made it by hand. Yeah, that's right. Most of this would have been made by hand. It would have had some machinery. No. But I wouldn't say it was smart. No? Oh, how do we hold this forehand on? Just put a stick through it. <laughs> that's bushy bloody talk, that yeah. is. It's... But uh, nothing smart about it. Will the camera get the, the Damascus? Can you see the uh, uh, pattern? The let's, have, let's have a look. I don't think it will. Oh, I... yeah, there we are. Yeah. Look at that. It's it's quite a it's quite a, a good, um, a pretty high end Damascus barrel. Quite quite often these like these barrels would have been made maybe in another factory in another workshop and uh, then. Just the whole skill in it itself in making, you know, having the mandrels. That, that's right. And then Slingsby, <coughs> who were the makers, um, would have made the ribs top and bottom, the forend attachment, and uh, uh, the, lug, the lock up lugs. And then it's just all soldered, all soldered together. Although uh, maybe you'll see there. The, the, this bottom metal, which locks the barrels to the action when it's closed, you can see it's it's um, fitted Dove, in a dovetail. dovetail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, and and that ensures it, it would be dovetailed in there, and then it would be soldered, and probably only soft solder like lead tin, 50-50 solder, um, nothing terribly strong, but more than strong enough for for a shotgun. And but not so strong you drop it in a caustic tank and it just, no, falls, right, apart. It just falls apart. Yeah. But the, the, the joy of these things is they still look nice even when, the, when their original finish is almost gone from them. Because well, it's it, that Damascus, like a nice Damascus knife, you know, yeah. it really shows up the, uh, the pattern in it. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was uh, pretty chuffed when the guy gave this to me because it's in very nice condition for its age, you know. Um, yeah, the, no, no. the locks are still very good. The springs in them are, are fine. Um, yeah, there's no half problem. Either. No, but you see, that's another indication of how old it is. Um, the um, yeah, no, no, there's no half problem. Oh, big pardon. So, I'm sorry, the, sure, sure, they would have had a half problem in 1860. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Should have done. Yeah. That's the, it's just, I thought to get the pins out of the way, so you get the breech open and shut without yeah. fucking up. Yeah. Serial yeah. number. Yeah, the yeah. serial number, yeah. yeah. Everything. I did research it. There's a little bit of engraving on the locks. Um, What's that at the front there? The insert. Little piece of ebony, probably. Yeah. It's not ebony. No, no it's translucent. Oh. Like, it's got, it's bone. It's <laughs> bone, it'll be then, yeah. <laughs> but, um, very dark. Yeah, what is this? Do you want to talk about whale for five? Yes. Five pin lock, so it's five pin lock. It's not a not a um, certainly not a Holland Holland by any means. Yeah, the, the number of pins on the in the lock indicate usually indicate um, the grade how how high a grade they are. Nine pin locks are the, the top of the wazza and um, this is only a five pin lock. So this would be a uh, a country gentleman's shotgun, you know, for shooting a few pheasants or grouse or whatever. Mm. Um, Do you want to talk about why these are only two and a half inch gauge shells and why modern shotguns are two and three quarter? Oh, only for, I, I don't know, only for um, more, uh, more capacity as far as Shot goes, I guess. I, I would have thought it would have been to do with powder. Yeah, more. <clears throat> yeah, probably. Yeah, but you see, in, 
in uh, the old black powder shot shells would have had a, uh, a, a powder, then a wad, probably a felt wad over the powder, uh, which has some compression. And the idea is that that takes a little bit of the shock out of the the, uh, the fire. Yeah, but modern ones have got that too. Yeah, that's right. But they've got a a like a, a plastic wad with with, yeah. with legs between it that that concertina the shock out. Yeah, they you know it's just a modern variation of an old an old idea. Yeah, they would have had a felt wad and probably in a paper wad over top of that, then the shot and then. Then I, um, so how do you know this is only two and a half inch chamber? Uh, how do you know it's not smokeless proof? It's not smokeless proof, I can tell you that. No, well, I know, besides yeah. it being Damascus, it's black powder, and I looked, years ago I looked up the markings underneath there. Okay, so and there is like crests and marks yeah, and the, the shit that you can tell. proof marks on it, yeah. Proof it's marks. Proofed in, proofed in England, yeah. So, but um, proof for black powder only. So it just gives you an idea how it, it, it's a quite a, a substantially made shotgun to be able to stand up to 40, 40 years of shooting two and three quarter inch smokeless rounds. It is off the face, I will admit, it's 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 plate and it's loose. Yeah. And it's a bit loose. But um, it's, it could you could renovate it, you know, repair it, but why would you? No, wouldn't want to. If you want to, if you want a shotgun to shoot, buy a shotgun to shoot. Yeah. Like something like this is beautiful how it is. Yeah. You know, it's... It, it kind of belongs on a wall or in a cabinet. Yeah, in a cabinet. To be just shown off, like it's yeah. beautiful. It's got to get its um, bit of oil over it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. It's a lovely old gun, and I, um, yeah, I've just put it away. It probably has had a couple of coats of oil in 30 years or whatever it is. Mm. <laughs> if it's lucky. But uh, yeah, I'm quite shocked with it. But as, as same with, so there's quite a gap here where the <laughs> poor old thing's been shot so many uh, black uh, smoke smoke around. Around. It's, yeah, it's stretched the action a little. But there's no cracks in it. I've seen these old girls crack here at the bottom of it. Yeah. yeah. And um, down in the bottom of the action, they'll crack through there. Yeah, because the the action bot the, the bar they call it is um, fairly thin there because it's been machined out on both sides to accommodate the locks. So there's not a lot of material here, and uh, that's the stress stress point in the corner of the the flat up mm. the flat and the buttress. That's why a lot of modern, you know, more modern shotguns is there's actually a rounded corner in that's there. That's right. Yeah. To so it's not as much of a um, weak point. That's right. Stress point. Yeah. Because um, yeah, any any stress affected on the top here is is trying to bend that, and that's where the bend will happen right there. Um, but for all the yeah, say. So it was even 1870s, so that's 30, 100, it's 150 years old. Mm. At, the, at the very least, perhaps a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it's something I'll just, I'll just put it away again, run an oily rag over it, put it away. But one thing that amazes me is I've got a Winchester 101 out there that was probably made in the 70s, losing its ribs. And this, this old girl's made. Uh, in the 1870s, and it's still fine. But each gun, from gun to gun, wouldn't take much for the bloke soldering the ribs on to make a little fuck up that, you know, 30, 40 years down the track ends up with the ribs coming off. Yeah. You know, there's a bit of shit in there or something, or the solder doesn't take and properly. I, and I just pried those bar, the ribs the up rib on that 101. There was a spot of solder, a spot of solder, a spot of solder, you know. It wasn't sold and complete. No, pretty so they're, they're a little bit cheap on the old solder. Yeah, let's right. say five cents worth of solder. Yeah. <laughs> some other blokes probably. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty pretty poor, really. Because it's a, you know, which is the 101 is a top grade gun. So there you go. That's my old shit.
What were you working on today that was an absolute pain in the ass? Like the design of the gun was. Uh, I don't want to bag that too. Much. Oh no no, we'll leave that. Yeah no, we'll leave that. It was funny when it happened though. It was yeah. It was um, a bit strange, and uh, we might talk about that next week. Yeah, and things like that. Basically, we had a gun with a locking lugs rotated around inside the action, and they weren't supposed to. And the bolt wouldn't come out, and, the, and I said that nasty word about what did I say? No, flip it. It was a. Uh, it's was probably something. too harsh even for Friday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. I um, like I said. I reckon the guy that designed that gun, I reckon a, you know, so he's a gun designer. I reckon a gunsmith must have been rooting his missus. And he thought, fuck, I know how to get gunsmiths back. And he invented that gun, knowing that someday a gunsmith is going to have to try and fix one. And he'll go, what the fuck, who invented this? Yeah. Uh, not the designer, or the. Yeah. Alright, what's Trent doing? Going to sleep. I think he's writing notes. Have a snooze. Writing some notes. I was going to grab a barrel. Yeah. Grab a barrel. You're getting all the good shit out, Trent. Yeah, well, I thought it's been a little while since we gave away something. And if we're going to talk about a particular product, we might as well. So, basically, what I thought was since we're going to have a bit of a talk, you know, just a, just a quick one on aim point here, that we get out a couple of things that I can give away for, for that. Yeah, Zane was talking about throwing the aim point up on the uh, up on the shotty before, and without going back into too much detail about how they are absolutely awesome, they are worth every single dollar that you spend on. I thought, why not have a little bit of a competition? Throw out there two questions about aim point: one for a hat, one for a sling. Well, I think there's a, I think a, a good point to make is that when people come in now looking for a red dot, you know what they used to say? Well, you wouldn't know that if you haven't been around long enough. Well, a lot of people used to say, oh, have you got a Pro Point, which is the Tasco made one? They stopped making them years ago, and they're shit. They're these great big ones? Yeah, they were the big, long ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what everyone's using, that's because that's what you can get back in the day. Yeah. But a lot of people come in now, you know how people say, oh, you know, they use, like, jacuzzi or fucking Colgate or something like yeah. that. You know, they, they use a brand mm -hmm. name. Ballistic tip. Yep. Even though they mean like VMAX or something like that. A lot of people coming in now saying, oh, have you got a name point? Yeah. And you say, yeah, I've got a name point. No, 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 I mean like a uh, like a loophole one. Yeah, or which a, is a delta or, point or, or a fucking bushnell or, or something like that. Yeah. But people are using the name aim point now as the as the product term. It's sort of the generic term almost. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, when they, were, they were kind of... a lot about the product. They were kind of the first, weren't they? Like when, uh, I, was, yeah. when, when I was researching, it was, um, I think it was 46 years ago, they came up with the first commercial one. Oh, do they? Fuck out. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. No, he's ruining my questions. So. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll stop yeah. talking. So if you guys just had Dave in the background there, he's absolutely correct. So they've been around for oh, a very, very, very long time. we got to find another question now, don't we? <laughs> Well, I do, and I can. That was going to be my first question, actually, to win the hat. But we can always change that up just a little bit. Now, the aim points that we're talking about today are the H2 micros. These things here were designed for law enforcement and military use. You might have to get a little bit closer there, Dave, if you want to get yeah. a really good look at it. When we first started getting these things in, and it's going to be very, very difficult for you guys to tell in the camera there. We had one come back because the screen, or the front lens here, the guy thought was actually on a, on a lean, that it wasn't in straight. Now, when we first and got he this... Was right. <laughs> he is right. We actually didn't know. What's this wee shit? Don't listen to him. It's he, the royal wee. He's, he's a knobhead. Nobody knew about this, all right? But that's, that lens in there is actually on that angle for a very, well, for a purpose. It is to actually help get rid of the parallax error from the dot. So when you look through it, it's really, really difficult without you guys being able to see, but there's a red dot that's generally right in the center of the, of the optic itself, so somewhere in here. With these higher end red dots, and especially with Aimpoint, who were the first to actually patent this design, they put this front lens on that angle so that it doesn't matter where you see that red dot in the optic, that is where the bullet's going. 
That is your point of impact. So that's really, really cool, I think, personally. Um, so a mate of mine did testing on on different aim points. I don't know if you can really see it. Different red dot sites. And he found that aim point was by far the best. And the parallax error on an aim point at 100 meters was about one MOA, which is half the size of the dot. Hmm. Yeah. So as opposed to other manufacturers, which can have up to 10 times that error. So I actually did a test a couple of years ago on different red dots and parallax error and that sort of shit. But Dave might process, or I think he deleted the data because I did it on the phone. It was pretty shit. But no, I, the, 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 I was actually looking at it today, <laughs> thinking about doing something with it. It's there. It's just not quite complete. Yeah. Anyway, we might redo it. I think, I think we should redo well, it. Well, I mean, Cousins will probably, I don't know if Cousins want, will let us do any filming down at his place, down at, I think, I think he will. Would he let us do filming? Will you let us do some filming scoops? Yeah, because if we can do filming down there, I mean, we can smash it out a few, during the week sometime. We don't have to plan it for months. Mm. Which would be good because we can test that fucking one that I've got out there on that 243, which I've done, <laughs> yeah. but never really did much video on no. it. Yeah, last yeah. time I was doing some filming of it, it was a little bit interrupted, wasn't I? Yeah. But so, <laughs> remember, with a red dot scope, oh, scope, with a red dot sight, you can call it a scope. I, I think you were about to say scoops, weren't you? Not scope. Yeah, it could have been. Got him on my mind. I haven't seen yeah. him all week. I miss my friend. You saw him Monday. <laughs> but it's been four more days. <laughs> it is a two eyes open optic. So the idea is you leave both eyes open and you just see a full picture. There's no closing your eye and losing that half of your vision. Oh, yeah. Tell them about the... Uh... The day? Or oh, mate? Or what? What are we talking about? About when you do the VR, you shut your eye. Yeah, yeah. So, so me, the VR? me and Zane actually got lucky enough. We well, I've done two. I mean, half the people watching would probably have done it. It was at Shot Show. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was in. It was on. Oh. Well, oh, for, those, for those for so. those of you that did the Aimpoint Shot Show VR experience, you'll know what I'm talking about. I think it was 2016 Shot Show. Was it really? Nah, it, it wasn't 2018. I'm very sure it wasn't oh, 2018. Yeah, you're right. I'm pretty sure it was the one that I wasn't working at. Yeah. I know they had, the, they had the. It was the last one. I thought it was the last one. Mm. Yeah, it was the last one. Maybe. Yeah. Because it was the one that we got in the shit for doing that Nerf gun. And oh, yeah. Do you guys Arnie, remember Arnie the Nerf Pauline, gun? Arnie Pauline came Arnie down Pauline. and picked it up. You know, we, 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 we had an orange aim point at the time. We should have put the orange aim point on the orange gun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would have worked. <laughs> then, yeah. I'm so, right. when, we do, when you do the VR with these, so the virtual reality training with these, you pick up literally a little, little butt stop like this, and it's got a frying pan on the end of it that somehow reads where it's pointing and all that crap and you put your goggles on and it's got your uh, earmuffs in while you're, you're, you're standing in a hide yeah you're just standing in this hide basically and you can hear like there's snow falling and you can hear these pigs and next thing this pig runs out and the first thing everybody does that uses a normal optic is they pick up the rifle they aim at the bloody pig and they close the eye well, the machine shuts off and goes, open both eyes. <laughs> and so it's goes, a proper training like, thing. It's not a game. It you knows know, when your eyes are closed. Well, I, I couldn't figure that out. How did it know that my eye was closed? I don't I've know how to figure out if your I've eyes are closed. I've got the squintiest I little eyes. I can't figure out if your eyes yeah. are closed now. I've got the squintiest little eyes. And somehow it knew that I had closed my right eye. And it, as soon as I open it, the game come back on. The pig starts running out. And I could drill it. It was just an amazing experience. I really wish that we could get it again so we could actually have it in the shop. And let yeah, yeah but that would mean getting home and answering his fucking phone. Well, that would be true. <laughs> be true. <laughs> I rang him this afternoon and his phone's off. So, oh, never ring the guy. Any of you guys out there have any points? Or uh, yeah, he might be. Any of you guys that have any points out there, throw it up in the comments below about how much you like it, dislike it, any of that crap. But for tonight, I'm going to be giving away one hat and one sling. Now, to win the hat, Beautiful orange, you'll always be seen. Apparently animals don't see colours, but I don't understand that. Why would you wear camo and then an orange hat? Don't get it. But I don't see it. Really exactly cool. what you just fucking but, said. That's but, why you wear an orange but hat. But then there's just a big fucking block of colour there, isn't there? What's the point of wearing camo and then putting a block of colour over the top of it? 
Well, we got the Blake. Camo you got... So you don't up. get a fucking shot, you dumbass. Oh, yes, but what's the point of wearing the camo underneath it? To break up the outline. It doesn't. You're now just a block of colour. Oh, the fucking deer's gonna be going, oh no, there's high vis fucking oh. shirt coming at me. It's so you don't look like a human. No, you don't you look, look like a human anyway, but other st- people want to not look like you a human. You have never looked like a human. You look like Lurch. You look like a shaved fucking Gobbledock. Yeah, you want to have chips? another go at that one, mate? No. You don't know what Gobbledock is? No. Oh, that's right, sorry, you're a Gobbledock. <laughs> now, to give away the hat. I hate you, something. You're a pain in my ass. <laughs> That's because you have, you take exception exception to things which are fucking. It's a stupid thing to do. Camo's there to break up your bloody outline. It's not that you ruin it by putting a big vest on. Which is why people wear blaze camo. Deer uh, haven't done a natural fucking. Have you ever asked a deer if it can see orange? Did it respond? They've done. To it? They've done testing. On and they asked deer. it. You don't have to ask it to work out. What colours can't it? you see? The fucking if all of them. Well then can you're in you, luck then, because you I when I come can fucking you, hunting you, 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 tell you don't have to wear a camo to try and I'll get away from you. Fuck that's that's off you. Now, you'll be hunting now, McDonald's, you fat. No. Oh, that's a bit harsh. Now, for who wants to win this? So, for the hat, the question is, when was Aimpoint started? The company. When was it started? You already told the answer though. No. You did it? No, he no, did not. We did not. Oh, no. Thank you very much. Oh, you said when the micro came out or something, was that, was that the other? For the sling, the rifle sling, the Aimpoint rifle sling, what year did Aimpoint um, sign the contract to supply the US military with Aimpoints? I'll actually give bonus points for those who can tell me how many units it was and what unit it was. Well, I, I don't know the answer to that one, so I'm not going to be able to spoil it. Alrighty, Chris and Michael, you're both wrong. That was when the guy first thought about it. When was the company started? That, that, was, when was, that was when he was having a shit one day. Yeah. Right? And he was like, you know what would be a good idea? Red dot. Yeah. With no parallax. That's it. He came up with a nice, it was a long, long looking thing. Hmm. Alright. See you later, Bill. Come on, Chris. Come on, Michael. Have another look. Read through it a bit. Russell Kingshot, you won the hat. Well done, mate. Macropod 69, he just wanted to write 69, I'm certain of it. Um, yeah, so who can, who can use Google the quickest is basically what Pretty much. Russell, Kingshot, give me a call at, the, at work, mate. Are you working tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of us has to. I'll be here. I'll probably have to finish loading the ammo, though. And does Trey even get weekends off anymore? No. 76 and 78 is wrong. Come on, guys. Come on. It's right there. It's on the website. I'll give you a tip. I don't even remember the question anymore. When was the year that they sold their first lot of stuff to the US Army? And how big was the thing? Like 2004. No. 10,000 units or something. No. It wasn't. 99. No. 2015. No. It wasn't. 1872. 1872. Actually, you're probably to Jesus. You're probably closest. Closer there, but. Come on, guys, it's right there on their website. You just got to look it up. Right, right. while anyway, that's, while while that's happening, you go into that. So, we wanted to talk about running in barrels. Kim Stevens, you want it, mate? Good work. 1997. Oh, I was close. No, I said 99. You said all the years. Um, how many units was it? 100,000. 100,000 units? 100,000 of the Comp M. Comp M. Mm. Okay, well. So Kim Stevens and Russell Kingshot, give me a call tomorrow, and uh, yeah, the prizes are yours, mate. Prizes are yours. I should have got a smaller barrel. This is a, a barrel out of, well, it's not out of anything yet. Thanks for playing. This is a barrel blank, and uh, it's for a 375, and it's a 1 in 8 twist. So it's a very fast 375 twist, mm. a big, long, heavy 375 projectile. This is owned by a client who currently has an application for a... Uh, 375 Shaytac, which they deemed a very powerful firearm, very very dangerous, Huge and dangerous. Um, yeah, so dangerous that this this is a 35 inch blank, and he'll have to buy a new safe for it to fit it into his house. I think so. Um, so it's a big unit. Well, I mean, yeah. there's a there's been a hell of a lot of servos that have been robbed from over a kilometre. 
And I mean, just think about, I mean, if you drop that on your foot, or drop it on someone else's foot, I mean, the damage that could be done. I would just love if, like, a giant huntsman climbed out of that. Hi, Tyrone. How are you? Um, so, yeah, so when a barrel is manufactured, there's several different ways of manufacturing a barrel. We'll go into that first. Okay, so most, like, production rifle manufacturers produce guns in relatively large amounts and so the barrel manufacturing side of things they need to do that in a relatively quick way in a quick in a quick production and so what they do is they get a little short fat bit of steel and then they put it over a mandrel which is the opposite of the inside of the barrel so it's a mandrel with rifling on it and then they hammer the shit out of this lump of steel and as they hammer it down it's, it stretches out naturally and as they and so they hammer it down the, the length of the barrel, I think they turn the barrel as they do it, and and there's like a big heap of hammers all the way around. That's why it's called hammer forge. So they forge the barrel steel onto this mandrel, and then they warm it up a little bit, pull the mandrel out, there's your barrel. Any of you people at home playing along that have a Steyr Pro Hunter or a Lithgow LA102, you can or actually a, see these marks. Or a Weatherby. Or so, a, oh, yeah, yeah, on the outside of the, the barrel. Outside, yeah, because yeah, so they don't sand them off. No, so, so they actually leave them on there so yeah. you can see how it's... Lots of manufacturers use that method, but most people just turn the marks off afterwards. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, so that's how you manufacture a barrel the quickest. Most rifle barrel manufacturers, though, um, button rifle their barrel. So what they do is they get a, a piece of steel like this, and then they'll drill it and they'll ream it to a perfect dimension. Deep hole drill it and ream it um, to the minor diameter. And then they'll force through what they call a button. So it's a piece of tungsten about that long with a little short section of rifling on it. And they'll put it in the barrel, they fill the barrel up with grease, they put it in the barrel, and then they push it through the barrel and turn it at the same time at the required um, twist rate. They push it and turn it all the way through until it comes out the other end. So it's actually pushed the barrel steel out the way, doesn't cut it, it's pushed the steel out the way to form the rifling. Yeah, so that's button rifling. That's most most barrel manufacturers make button rifle barrels, and button rifle barrels are exceptionally good. Um, some people still go with cut rifle barrels though, um, but generally speaking, it's a bit of a much and muchness as far as performance goes. Cut rifle barrels, what they do is they, they drill and ring the barrel and then they have a, a tooth tool and they actually draw it through the barrel and tur twist it as it goes through the barrel to cut the rifling into the barrel. They do one flute at a time, which is why the, all the old cut rifle barrels only had four flutes because you're not going to do it six times, you're going to do it four times. No, the infield did it four times. Oh, the infield, do they do it five? Yeah. Okay. Well, they started the, the wrong end, though, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Oh, they turned it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's the other thing, yeah. too. They made it left hand. <laughs> wrong, wrong twist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone right. else has a right hand twist, except for the infield, did left hand twist. Um, but most people, it's four or three groove cut rifling if you get a modern cut rifle barrel. Um, whereas with uh, button mm -hmm. rifling, you can do three or four or five or six. Yeah, generally speaking, like you can get either one. So, those different machining methods all have their own sort of um, variabilities and econcentricities and all stuff associated with it. So we're going to focus on a button rifle barrel first, and then I'm going to go into the others because of, and why the, the running process is applicable for all three. Now the running process, yes, it is applicable. Running in a barrel is very important, both for the accuracy and performance as well as the life of the barrel, okay? Now it's been suggested to me in the past um, by several people that running barrels in is a waste of time and it's just a way of firearm dealers to sell extra ammo on more barrels, which is nonsense, yeah? Um, barrel manufacturers, it's, it's well documented uh, by some of the, the best barrel manufacturers in the world. And if you wanna read uh, more on it, then I do recommend going to Dan Lilge's website, riflebarrels.com. There's a lot of literature on that, and he does have a thing in there on about running in barrels and why it's important. So, when you button rifle a barrel, I mean, even when you ream a barrel, the inside finish isn't perfect. 
when you button the barrel, so you force the button through, again, the finish inside isn't perfect. And so rifle manufacturers, like good match rifle manufacturers, will actually, they'll cast a block inside the barrel, yeah, then they'll cover it in grit, and they will push it through the barrel and back through the barrel, and that's called hand lapping barrels, yeah? So good match rifle manu manufacturers will hand lap their barrels. And it takes a little while to do it, and they go through several grits and everything to get the, a perfect, even, uniform finish inside the barrel, yeah? It also gets rid of any um, errors you've got associated with diameters. So if you've got a tight spot in the barrel, hand lapping will actually remove that tight spot. And so you, you're, the inside dimension of the barrel is consistent the whole way through. Now, with rim fires, there's some tricks and stuff they can do there, but we're not focusing on that because you don't really run rim fire barrels in. But with a, with a conventional rifle barrel like this, there's still some machine marks left over at the end of the, of the lapping process. So you get the raw barrel like this, and I chamber it and thread it and fit it up and muzzle brakes and all that sort of crap. And then you take it out and shoot it. And the first round that you put through it is gonna have, a, it's gonna leave a lot of copper inside the barrel. And that's because the internal finish of the barrel is still quite relatively quite rough, yeah? That roughness strips copper off the outside of the projectile and leaves it inside the barrel. That copper, if, if it's left there, will build up, build up and It'll do funny things. It'll change the inside dimensions of the barrel, uh, but you'll also lose accuracy and that sort of stuff. And so you have to clean it out. So after you've fired your first round, you should always clean the barrel. And you'll notice a lot of blue coming out because it turns the copper that's in the barrel into a sulfate, which is blue, and then um, deposits it out at the end. And so there'll be a lot of blue. But then after you, your next round, there'll be less and less and less and less and less. Most barrel manufacturers recommend for at least the first 10 to 20 rounds cleaning after every shot. So you fire a round through it and then you clean it and then you fire a round through it and you clean it. And you'll notice the, the more you do that, the easier it gets to clean and you'll get to a point where you fire one shot through it and almost no copper comes out. Because the internal finish of the barrel, you're actually using the projectiles as an abrasive. And you don't need to put abrasive compounds. There are abrasive compounds on the market for cleaning inside the barrels. If you're having to use them to clean the barrel out, the barrel's fucked. Don't even worry about it, throw it away, get a new one. Just use the, the bare bullets as an abrasive to remove any machine marks and whatnot inside the barrel. Now with match gray barrels, you, it's important to do, even though they're hand lapped. A off the shelf factory barrel is the same, it's even worse. The internal finish of most factory barrels are far worse than any aftermarket barrel. So it's very important with a, with a factory barrel to run them in correctly. Now, realistically, most people aren't gonna go through 20 rounds of firing a shot and cleaning it. Most people are just, they don't have the patience for that sort of shit. So I do recommend one shot and clean it, and then two shots and clean it, three and clean it, four and clean it, five and clean it, five and clean it, yeah? That's a packet of ammo. After that, if you do, if you follow that process and you clean it thoroughly with a good copper solvent, then by the end of those 20 rounds, there'll be a dramatic difference in the finish of the inside of your barrel and it won't deposit anywhere near as much copper. After that, I recommend not shooting any more than 20 rounds in a string until you've fired about 150 rounds through the barrel. Yeah, so after a 20 round string, you would clean it. Yeah, well if you go out at night and you shoot five or six rounds through it, when you bring it back, clean it. Always clean it whenever you've got an opportunity to. Um, but certainly, clean them, get the copper out of it, and you'll, you'll have a barrel that shoots much more accurately. The internal finish will be much better, which means you'll have much more consistent velocities, which means it will shoot better at long range if you're a long range shooter, shoots better at short range if you're a short range shooter, and the barrel will last longer. You get more, more shots out of the barrel. So, especially if you, uh, it's quite a hot round, the pores in the steel open up in the throat of the barrel, and when they open up, it allows more copper to, and, and, other, and nitro and that sort of shit to deposit there. And so you want to make sure that the throat in particular is kept nice and clean, because uh, if you burn the throat out too quick, then you'll then that deteriorates the accuracy. But like I said, factory barrels are 
are as important, more important to run in. So shoot them and clean them and that sort of stuff. Now, there's a bit of a myth out there that hammer forged barrels don't need to be run in, like tickers and Seikos and that sort of stuff. Because they haven't got a button pushed through them, that the internal finish of the barrels is better. Now, when you push a button through a barrel, what you actually do is you pull at the, the steel, yeah? Because it doesn't perfectly cut, or it doesn't perfectly forge the barrel. It pulls on the steel a little bit and rips it, and you end up with these like lines running down the length of the barrel, um, which is the, the marks that are left behind from the machining process, which you get out from lapping and then from shooting projectiles through it. Now, if you're hammer forging, you're not getting those lines running down the barrels. But what you get instead is you get rings in the barrels at different diameters because as the hammer forging goes down the barrel, harmonics set up in the barrel itself. And you'll get to a point where the harmonic sets up and you end up with variations in diameters, very slight variations. And then it'll settle back down again and then it'll come back again. And you see these patches, like every few inches, you'll see a, a really rough patch and then it'll go smooth and really rough and smooth and rough and smooth. And that's that harmonic as it goes down the barrel. Now that's as important, if not more important, to get that out. So hand lapping can get that out. Factories don't have the time to do that. You've got to spend your time running a hammer forged barrel in. So if you own a Ticker or a Seiko or anything like um, Steyr or anything like Lift that, Lifco, you do have to run them in. It's just as important. Um, and if you run them in, you'll get much better performance out of it. Um, there was one other thing I was going to cover, but I can't remember. Cut, cut rifle barrel. Cut rifle barrels are the same yeah. as a button rifle barrel. They don't perfectly cut the barrel. They do tear the, yeah. the metalwork sometimes. And so you do need to run in cut rifle barrels as well. Um, but if you've got a particularly rough barrel, you can get them lapped. Just don't bring it to me. I don't do that shit. <laughs> so, but that's how you, that's why it's important. Now, if you want to run in a barrel, you need to make sure you've got a good copper solvent. Hoppy's number nine won't do it. Hoppy's number nine is a good solvent, especially down the track once the barrel's a bit more run in. But it doesn't pull copper out very well. You want a really good copper solvent like butchers. Ball foam is pretty good, but it's a bit messy. Yep. It depends on, it depends on what, what you want. want. Number nine. Um, I'm not really interested in sales type thing, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, and, and oh. sweets. Yeah, no, no. Don't, don't worry about the hobbies. Okay. Hobbies is a nitro solvent. It's petroleum based. It's not that good at copper. Butchers is like no. highly recommended sweets, the black one within the black um, bottle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ventress community in America and that sort of stuff. I think the guys over here use like Vortec and that sort of like some other exotic shit. But these are ammonia based solvents uh, and they're exceptionally good at pulling copper out of barrels, out of barrel stems. Um, so yeah, that's what you uh, that's what you want to do. Make sure you've yeah, got a nice barrel. Yeah, Lithgow yeah. says that you don't need to run them in yet, but at the end of the day... I no, mean, you do. Absolutely you, have to. Yeah. I mean, if I put a bore scope down one of those Lithgows over there, you'd probably shit yourself. Like, they all, all rifle barrels, when you look down with a bore scope, look like shit. I reckon we should try and film that. Yeah, we probably could. I mean, at the end of the day, though, regardless of what a manufacturer says, they haven't bought the rifle, you have. So, you follow a few... Like one packet of ammo and a little bit of your time to run it in, regardless of what someone says, isn't well, a waste still, of your time. It's not like you're wasting that 20 rounds. You no, still got to sort the gun in and all that sort of stuff. So exactly. So you spend 20 rounds sorting the gun in. Yeah. So don't don't sit there and think that it's you know this is some way of getting extra sales or anything like that. It's not. It's just. It's just a little bit of security. Yeah. That's all it is. So regardless of what the manufacturer says, hey, the manufacturer says you don't have to fucking change the oil in your cars now for like 15,000 kilometres. I bet you most people do. Well, have you seen it when it comes out after 15,000 k's? Yeah. Mine's supposed to not be 15,000 k's. Yeah, it comes out fucking black. It's horrendous. Yeah. Absolutely horrendous. So, Stuart also, evening mate, how are you? I actually just stood up for you a little bit before, so... Yeah, have a watch of that, see if <laughs> that hasn't helped you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Put a chuck of those clean in the back. Yeah. Ooh, there we go. Oh, he's caught both of them. Well done. The, um... Alright, so... The other one was the... 
Who who saw the Steelo video that I, that someone? How played? good was the Steelo video? I would have never have thought of him. Steelo actually come up with another idea this afternoon. Oh, did he? Because that one was actually Heidi's oh, idea. Yeah? So I actually pulled the piss. I didn't pull the piss out of him. I said he was a unit. She put up a video, a picture of him at, at, um, at Baywatch. Baywatch. <laughs> Baywatch at Bremer Bay, and I used that picture to to edit the Baywatch video. But yeah, I said, oh, he's a bit of a year. And she says, yeah, he's a bit of <laughs> Should be on Baywatch or something. So I'll put him on Baywatch for Heidi. I'm certain Heidi appreciated that too. <laughs> Watching her man run down the sand. <laughs> oh, the Hoff's got a bit more hair on him than what Steelo does. Into the it? scarab. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Won't steal him. <laughs> well, Steelo's going for the area of Roe. Where's Roe? Esperance, you yeah, know, right across to Esperance, I think. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, and up to Tanning. Oh, east side of the Albany Highway. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not like he doesn't have enough on his plate, but hey. No, yeah, he needs, <laughs> needs a bit more yeah, work. Yeah, fuck all yeah. yeah. Turns out he doesn't like sleep. <laughs> yeah. So, good on him. Um, yeah, up to where though? Oh, it's a huge. Rose, the second biggest electorate in the state, I think. I think it might go up, out, right out to Norseman. Mm, I'm pretty sure it goes all the way through there. Yeah. Oh, like Kalgoorlie, Norseman, and now. It doesn't get Kalgoorlie. I think Kalgoorlie's got their own electorate. Mm. Hey, oh, Dean. I think it's KBC. What about but, but, um, Junior? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Roe would, yeah, it's, it's Ravy in Northern, yeah. or uh, Norseman rather, and. Um, yeah, Albany's got its own. I, really, so, uh, I think it's. We ended on annoying. Everything east of. Yeah, going yeah, yeah. east of Albany Highway. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, no, that's cool. It's all right. So, end the video off today. Are you having a sook about your job? With me having a sook? No, I'm not having a sook about my job. I like my job. I don't like my boss. I like one of them. <laughs> one of them's all right. The other one's a bit, a bit hard, like herding cats. But yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He'd be all right, the other one, if he just didn't speak so much. Yeah, the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> All right, so we're going to end it on annoying customer traits. So things that people do that annoy me. Well, actually annoy all of us. And this was actually brought up. Well, There's any number of things. It's, it's a lot of I haven't heard about this till now, so no, this has nothing to do with me. No, well, it is, because <laughs> you, you get just as annoyed as the rest of us. Now. Mm. As you know, working in this industry, there's a lot of... You get upset if the good people, people and there's... Sauce and chips. Oh, no, I like sauce. That's fine. <laughs> So, there's a lot of different people in this industry and a lot of people annoy me. But that's all right, because I think that half the time I'm good enough to get through it without them actually knowing that I've been annoyed. But this actually came up by a certain thing that was said by one of our staff a couple of days ago, when he came out and asked me where the 30 aught six is. <laughs> now, as an Australian, fuck it, I don't care if you're not Australian, you can be a Kiwi for all I care. We're not Yanks. Why the fuck would you come and ask me for the 30 aught six? We sacked him on the spot. What the saying. fuck is aught? It's not a word. It's not a word. I don't care what the Yanks think, it's not a fucking word. And don't ever ask me for 30 aught six. I bet you everyone will from now on. <laughs> and I will, if that's the everyone case... Everyone has to come in. three, And you have to buy your three or eight ammo. <laughs> if that happens, I will make sure that there is none on the fucking shelf. <laughs> At all. That's what will happen. Well, there is only like 30 or six now. Shut up. It's not aught. Hey, we even discussed it. I don't care if you come in and ask for the three zero dash zero six ammo. That's fine. Don't come in and ask me 30 or 6. Hate it. As I, no. said, as I said, though, it's technically not as, it's not any worse than 30 or 6. Because it's not a fucking O, it's a zero. Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. But at least it means something. Maybe. What, what does ought mean? It, it rolls off the tongue a bit, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's, it's like saying ought sort of breaks the, oh. actually breaks your, your vocabulary, like your. Yeah. I think it's more of a dialectual type like thing, it. though. Like, yeah. and someone else in this shop who I won't point fingers at <laughs> said, "Well, it's because it's short for naught." I don't give a fuck. That's like changing it to 30 06. 
Cool. You don't shorten that bit of it down. Why don't you shorten zero down to all? Fuck off. Don't like it. It annoys me. It actually makes my skin just contract on my body. So it's your skin. contribution to <laughs> I mean, I pulled the piss out of like 270 in Winchester short mag, but I spent some time doing it, and I and I backed up my reasons why. This is your contribution to pulling the piss out of the cartridge. No, it's not. It's pulling the piss out of people that don't know how to speak. <laughs> There's one thing in the world that gets me annoyed, and that's people that can't spell. When you can't spell, it means you can't speak. Well, I can't spell naught, so I'm going to say ought. Ought. Fucking ought what. Or, put or some arcs. herbs in or If some fucker comes in and arcs me where the 30 or 6 is, I'm going to quit. <laughs> you know the one I like? You know what the one that I really <laughs> fucking like? What's that? I'm going to go. Rectical. Rectical. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Rectical. <laughs> that's a good one. It's a fucking radical. There's only one C in it. Yeah. Where's rectical. the rectical? Well, that's in your handbag when you carry it. <laughs> no, your rectical. It's what you shit out of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going. All right, All right, right I'll Bill. catch up. See you, Bill. Oh, that annoys me. Put up below, guys. Put up below anything that annoys you. In this, any terminology, oh, anything. Go, mate. Up. You know, your first customer's going to be in your market. Oh, I need a fucking, I need a long-range scope with a TMR rectical for me, for me 30 or 6 for me 30 or 6 <laughs> oh, 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 I'm just going home. I get out! That'll be the end of it. I actually reckon someone wanting a scope that might want to shoot 7.62-54 Russian. Yeah, that was, a, that was a good one. I know where he's going with it. I mean, that's... But it's, it's everyone knows what you're talking about. It's yeah. not. It's not. After I mean, it's the Russian cartridge. It's what it is. You know. Yeah. I mean, it stands for rim. Whatever. You know what he's fucking talking. Yes. About. Scoops. Muzzle brake. B r e a k. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's muzzle brake. B r a k e. It's a brake as in it stops something. Not brake as in it breaks something. To be fair, though, I think there are some staff members here who even spell it B r e a k. There is one staff member. He's not here today. There was one staff member. There's a staff member here that can't fucking spell. He spelled muzzle m u z e l. And it's now stuck in my computer. Is that? When he first told me that he's not, that he's illiterate, I kind of thought, no, nah, he's just a lazy fuck. But the more I think about it, he's actually probably he's a bit illiterate. Uh, well, look, nobody but he really drops. cares, apparently. Nobody really cares. There's, there's bugger all in there of people saying this is what I hate. Yeah, it's just you. It's just me. It's just I'm you. Just you a soup, grumpy old cunt. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, you're turned 40. I haven't turned 40 yet. You're about to, though. Soon. Not yet, though. Yeah. Well, at least you haven't already turned 40 like Steelo. It's still at 40. Steelo turned 40 last year. Ooh. As did Doug from Glenway. Yeah, but Doug looks 46. Steelo doesn't look like he's 40 yet. Oh, no, Steelo looks like he's 50. <laughs> he's had a hard, he's had hard life. life. He's had a hard life, that bloke. He only looks young when he hangs around with his missus. Yeah, well, that's true. Oof. Um, so what else are we doing? I don't know. Uh, hang on. People that think their rifles shoot flat out to 500 yards when they've been zeroed at 100. Yeah, yes. I had someone try and tell yeah. me that. Or any fucker that says, oh, it's the flat, I, I love how flat it is. It's fucking not. What, you think a bullet doesn't get affected by gravity? Of course it does. It's not flat. You put your barrel flat, it's still going to fall to the fucking ground. It doesn't get there and be fucking flat. I think one of the, the flattest rounds, I don't have my ballistic data here. But, because it's on my computer, but 7mm Remington Ultra Magnum shooting like a 180 grain burger would have to be one of the flattest rounds I've ever used. But my 26 nozzler might, might just shoot a bit flatter than it, but probably not. But it's flat as a biscuit, <laughs> yeah, it's flat. And at 500 metres, you would have to have... 20 inches of drop? More? 25 inches of drop, I reckon? Well, that's fucking that much drop. Like, even a 7mm Ultra Mag does not shoot flat, and that's fucking a lot flatter than a 308 or a 270 or a fucking. Well, I'm just 243. I'm just giggling about Macropod that reckons he likes shooting at 1 aught 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 meters. <laughs> you fuck it. <laughs> 
I'm so glad. <laughs> Good, I like it. Who won, Daryl, who won the sling? The sling was won by Kim Stevens, mate. You missed out on that. You're too late. Why have you got two of those red dots? So? Lucky, I guess. Okay. One for each eye. One for that. So if you do have a, an aim point, you can also get these yes. um, magnifiers as well. You can also get these Merkles. <laughs> so the magnifier comes off, you just use it like a standard red dog. People who put clips in their rifle. Yes. A clip. Yes. That's another good one. Clips. What are they relating to when they do say clip? Do they mean like something like what the Grand used to use? Like a stripper clip? Maybe? Yeah, yeah stripper, 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 stripper clip would be a clip. At least that's a clip. Well, the, you know the... Um, what about those 10 round clips that you get for your Ruger American Rimfire? They're pretty cool. Are you mean what? a magazine? No, a clip. No, I mean a magazine. That's what you mean. Um, yeah, I don't think we focus on this too much. You're just going to soak. <laughs> He's turning old. That's no, good because heaps of people are responding now about what they don't like. Oh, I can't see them on this yeah, one. I can. It's cool. You yeah, press the button. Yeah, because you're having like you're, you're breathing in all the fucking sooks. Scoop. 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 Scoops. Scoops. When, when scoop. someone just says caliber, yeah. what caliber is it? It's thirty caliber. Oh yeah, but I mean, what caliber? Are well, you going to throw eight or thirty or six or what should they say? <laughs> cartridge. Well, that's the bullet. That's not what cartridge is it? It's not a fucking cartridge. Mm. It takes mm. cartridges. Okay. It's like looking at your what? car and saying, what fuel is it? Petrol. It's quite clear. It's not, a, it's not fuel. <laughs> what fuel does it take? Petrol. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the right one. What no, cartridge does, does it take? Me. Now I'm getting pissed off. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. But it what cartridge does it take? What is the calibre of the firearm? I mean, yeah, calibre's dual use in that, in that term. Right. Calibre could mean the literal bore diameter. Calibre. I would love to measure their blood pressures right now. But See who's no, like, what, yeah. what specific term would you use to donate what cartridge fits in a gun? Well, if somebody came in and asked for a particular round, so if somebody walked in and said, I had a 203 Remington, you would know that that's what they wanted. Because they're looking for those cartridges. Yes. If somebody walked in and said, I just need, I need a packet of 2030 cal, 30 cal what? Projectiles, I would assume. Yeah, that's what I would do. Oh, no, no, loaded. 30 cal loaded what? Throw out a wind mag? Throw out eight? 30 carbine? Well, I had someone come in here and get angry at me one day because I didn't know what he was talking about when he said he wanted 12 gauge shotgun cartridges. I said, yeah, I got them. No, 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 the cartridges. Yeah, I've got the cartridges. No, 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 the cartridges. Like the. What? We bought it down. He meant wads. Oh, wads. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't. No, I, I don't have. What is a cardboard? Oh. <laughs> that was um, that was interesting. But no, we were talking about this the other day when they were doing the filming. Like it's the ammunition. It, like if you were to say that that is throwaway caliber ammunition, no, that I would say I would I would recommend instead to say that is throwaway cartridge. But a firearm. If you say asking, what do you put in it? Like, um, what is it designed to take? You would say throw away. It, what caliber is it? Throw away. It's a throw away. It's like he's speaking Chinese. I have no idea what he's talking about. I wouldn't assume. I wouldn't assume you know. <laughs> no, you've only been working here for four years. Five. Oh, fuck, is it really? Yeah. It's my third Five. this year. Is it really? It is. Oh, the other one was I uh, almost featured on my own, uh, on my <laughs> first... <laughs> Gilksy, you bastard. <laughs> Three or eight, you reckon? Yeah. Started something, yeah? I was uh, asking evidence myself, I? in uh, court in a murder trial. I never actually gave evidence in court in the end. Spring Dixon asked um, that. So but it was a, a bit of a, a, uh, a move for me. And the other one is, is that, which um, is really surprising because we actually thought that he'd be giving no, or getting evidence no. against him. That's what, murder charge? Well, something. Yeah, well, no. Both eyes open. <laughs> no, well, your mum hasn't fucking... Your mum has probably would... charged me for murdering that ass. My mum's <laughs> <mom's laughs> probably watching. Mrs. Allen. 
Yeah, it's the high. And, it's and, the... and I'd back her in a fight over you. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. <laughs> No, no, we're talking about the 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 abstract your mum. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not what, talking literally your mum. That's what makes it really hard here with your mum jokes because his mum's in all the time. Walks past all the. Oh, damn it! <laughs> why are you so fat? Trick. My mum makes time... your mum jokes to me. Yeah, you're like, why are you face? Why are you so fat? Trick? Well, every time I fuck your mum, she gives me a cookie. Oh, hi, Jules. <laughs> No, she doesn't make cookies anyway, she makes cakes. Cakes? Yeah. And a pretty good cob loaf. Alright, let's call yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Let's call it. But Bill stole the fucking cake, it's his house. Okay, cool. Let's right, call, it. call it. Thanks um, very much, guys, for watching. Hope you have a good weekend. Uh, me and Zane are on tomorrow for a little bit. He's fucking off. I'm going to go shooting. shooting. So it'll be me and Bill in the afternoon. Um, hope to see you guys next week sometime. And for those guys that won the hat and the sling, get in touch and we'll, uh, we'll get them out to you. Congrats. Good work, guys. Catch us later.